Nonviolence is very distinct from peace because peace is very much caught up with, with, uh, uh, with the concept of war and it's much, very much a matter of negotiation and not a matter of conscience. You see, it's, it's uh, because it's part of international relations and, and Menon's entire thinking about peace was very much caught up with international negotiations, uh, you know, during the Cold War and so on. So peace was a much more central notion for me than nonviolence, partly because of Menon's influence. Uh, and nonviolence is a completely different idea. Mm, you know, mm. and you, we can't confuse international relations issues with, yeah. with the moral and political notion of nonviolence. There, there is this very fascinating tradition which goes from Dostoevsky and Tolstoy down to Solzhenitsyn, mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> which is very much appealing to a kind of Russian religiosity, <clears throat> mm. uh, uh, you know, Russian Orthodox religiosity, but though, of course, Tolstoy's religion was very maverick. Um, and, and Gandhi was of course appealing to Indian religious traditions and they have a lot of affinities because mm -hmm. the common target was European civilization for both of them. So since he, he's against the, that form of, of achievement, the state, capital, and modernity, generally European modernity for India, Swaraj is the opposite of, of that, that that's to, to have English rule by other means. Right, but as he says in Inswara. Um, so, so nonviolence for him is, is that you need to find a way that doesn't just mimic the violence of the state. Yeah. You need a form of resistance that is not what the terrorist movements and so on, you know, uh, in India. You know, he was, I mean, in Swaraj in a way is a dialogue with, with those people partly. So the only way you can deal with the state is to resist it, but it can't be violent resistance for the reasons that we were just discussing. Machiavelli said once famously, he was advising the prince, as you know, in that famous work, and, and he made a distinction between fear and love. And Machiavelli says, <clears throat> the ruler always has a choice between getting his people to either fear him or, or love him. And he says of these two emotions, it's better to, to get the people to fear him rather than to love him. Why? Because fear of this sort is given, just, you know, fear comes upon you. It wells up in you and and so you have no autonomy, whereas love is freely given. And he says, you don't want to give people autonomy. And so you shouldn't make them love you because the love will have to come from their, cho their choices, their autonomy, right? And you don't, and giving the people autonomy is, is a very dangerous thing. So it's better to make them fear you because fear comes helplessly to them. He's not just reversing Machiavelli, right? Uh, advising the same thing to, to, to the people as Machiavelli was advising the ruler. No. It's something else he's doing. But so this much he agrees with Machiavelli. You're never going, you know, the, the, it can't be reason, love, all those things. You can't do that with the state. It's not the kind of thing you can do it with. So the question is, if it's not fear, yeah. What is what is the point of mass resistance? So when it comes to violence, you have these many different angles, you know, the many different forms of it. Yeah. Physical, psychological, authoritarian, delinquent, you know, the, there's just whereas the point of nonviolence for Gandhi is it it isn't as if you can say there's psychological nonviolence, there's physical nonviolence, there's, you know, the, it's just nonviolence is a positive philosophy. Right, it's 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 it should be, and it's distinct from peace, um, and it's it's just a way of saying, on the one hand, the, uh, that it's just doing duty, religious duty. It's it's the, for him, it's the one common thing in all religions, in all religions. It's 
you know, there are only one or two common things, but Ahimsa is one of them. Uh, yeah. All religions, he says, it's the, it's the heart of all religions. Yeah. So he often asks, what is common to all religions? And one answer is that is always there is Ahimsa, right? And so there is a sense in which he, he thinks it's, it's in that sense, not Hindu versions of it. It's just, you know, it's part of dharma, of religious duty, whichever view you take of it, you know, whichever specific orientation, whether it's Hindu, Muslim, Christian, Jain, Buddhist, and so on, it's the same thing in yeah. the end. 